this episode, niche media expert Andrew Alleman and I came up with a few sketch ideas. Okay. So I'm thinking about the $1 billion domain name. Okay. This is a domain name that is so important that it's a billion dollars. I was starting a meme communication podcast. Hmm. Like, where it's like there's a little bit of silence and then laughter a little bit more. So what are other categories that we could have that that would be like impossible to fill? You'd because be the no number one. one. Would them, right? Nobody would be in it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's along the same lines, but we have a lot of people on there that are, had near-death experiences. So... You know, death experiences. Death experiences. <laughs> Which one did we pick? You'll find out on this episode of... It's a sketch comedy podcast show. Welcome to Sketch Comedy Podcast Show, the one-of-a-kind show where I, Stuart Rice, invite interesting people to have intriguing conversations and then improvise a comedy sketch based on what we talked about. It's the only show like it on the internet. And we have a special treat for you this week. The dear listener is now you can be a dear watcher because not only do we have an audio version of the podcast, we have this, a video version where you can actually see everything. If you would like to see more or if you're listening and you would like to hear or watch, go to youtube.com slash sketch com pod or just type in sketch comedy podcast show into the browser in youtube and check out the full video episode you get to see us having our discussion it's pretty wonderful and this week's episode is also pretty wonderful in this week's episode we have podcastguest.com creator and niche media expert andrew alleman who Gives us the story, the skinny on domain names, podcasts, and what it takes to be a really good guest, uh, or where to get really good guests if you need them. So without any further ado, let's get right into it and start my conversation with Andrew Alleman. Andrew, thanks so much for coming in today. Well, coming in, showing up. Whatever. You're on the TV screen. That works. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I've got a quick question for you. You ready? I don't know if I'm ready or not, but... <laughs> uh, brace yourself. What makes you interesting? Oh, what makes me interesting? You know, I'm often asked that. I was asked that in interviews when I'm earlier, and I would say, I'm not that interesting. But I guess what makes me interesting is that I love niche things that are kind of weird and different. I have a business based around domain names of all things, um, which a lot of people are like, wait, you have a, a business and a blog about domain names. How can you write about that every day? And I do write about domain names every day, which most people don't think about often. So no. I would say if I'm interesting, I go down rabbit holes like that. Okay. All right. Um, you do a little bit more interesting stuff than that. I mean, the reason we're talking is one of the reasons I think you're pretty interesting is that okay, you connect you connect interesting people to uh, people that like to talk to interesting people. So you have a website called podcastguests.com. And it is probably one of the best resources. I do, oh, shoot. Did I lose you? Oh, no, there you uh, I'm here. It, I'm yeah, it is probably one of the best resources I've ever used. I have used as a podcaster to get guests for the last, I would say, five years, I think. It's been about five years. But I've been able to get really incredible guests through your website. So I really appreciate it. And I thought it'd be great to find out, like, more about how that process works. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, if I recall correctly, when we featured your podcast the first time, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you wrote back afterwards saying... You're about to give up on podcasting because finding guests was so hard, right? And, and yeah. getting them to come on. And then I, I don't know how many we sent you the first time around, but you were just like, it, now I've got a year's worth of bookings to do. So. It was like, it was it was close to 50. It was 50. Okay. pretty incredible and, and super high quality guests. Some of my these, favorite shows came from guests that I got off of podcastguests.com. That's awesome so. because, you know, especially for a show like yours where, you know, I'll, I'll have to admit I'm a little bit timid coming on here. I'm not a funny guy. You promised me that you're the funny guy and so mm -hmm. it's okay. But. 
I like to think I'm funny. That's about all I need to do is just think I'm funny. And then, um, yeah, no, it's not about being funny. It's about being, uh, the thing about this show is it's about being real. And then the funny just comes that it Mm -hmm. just shows up out of nowhere. But, um, it's the most inappropriately named podcast on the planet. It anyway, but, um, so how do you how do you get started? Well, let's talk about domain names. So you are really into domain names. I am too. I've got a huge collection of domain names that I've registered and sit on. I own the other Facebook.com, which is mm. probably my favorite one, but mm-hmm. I, I'm worried to do anything with it because I'm going to get sued. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. T- tell me about um, uh, or tell us about uh, what what you do with domain names. It sounds like you you got a lot of stuff that you do. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess I, I do buy and sell domain names, but my main thing is I have what's essentially a trade publication for the domain name industry called DomainNameWire.com. Um, and so I just write about everything that's going on with domain names. So it could be a, a domain that's sold for a lot of money. It could be a lawsuit because some guy uses the other Facebook.com. It could be, you know, anything along those lines. And um, it's a fascinating business. And you know, it's, it's a multi, not my business, but the industry is billions of dollars a year, right? And, yeah. and transactions and that sort of thing. You think about everyone who has a website. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun. And it, it's what led me into podcasting back in 2014. I was kind of looking around. I was like, okay, a blog is great, but you know, it'd be great to sit down and talk to people longer, right? Like a half hour in-depth conversation. So I, I started a podcast and um, that's up to episode number 407, I think. So I've been wow. doing it just about weekly since 2014. So a long time. And so really, I can thank domain names for getting me into podcasting, which led into this new business and platform. Oh, that's very cool. Um, let's, let's go back to domain names, because I think that there is a lot of interesting stuff that happens there. Sure. Um, First off, what is a good strategy for someone if they're buying a domain name, like for a business? Right. Let's, so uh, this is something that happens. I was in a, a tow truck for bad reasons, always, because you're never in a tow truck for good reasons, right? It's always a right. bad reason. Your car broke down, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but the tow truck driver was asking me about domain names, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm not, I'm no expert. I just kind of, I get an idea and I like my favorite idea for a domain name was I bought catsforcats.com and the whole idea there was for uh, rich cats to find uh, other cats to have as pets. It never took off because I never did anything with it because it was a silly idea, but I bought the domain name and I've got lots and lots of those types of things. So what's a good strategy when someone's going in for a, a domain name? What is something that they have to think about? Yeah, so a, a couple of tips for you. First of all, um, we have what's called the radio test in domain names, which is if I tell you what my domain name is, can you understand it and then can you spell it? So you told me catsforcats.com, right? And so the first thing <laughs> I'm thinking is, is it F O R or is it the number four? In the oh, we name? went with the number four. But you went that, with the number four, yeah. classy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. Uh, you know, so that sort of thing, that name fails the radio test, right? Because a lot of people are going to go type in F-O-R for it. Um, and so what I recommend when people come upon a domain name that they want, that they think will be good for their business, go out to like five year friends and talk, talk to them. Don't type it, but talk to them and say, hey, I'm thinking about naming my business Cats for Cats. And, you know, first of all, they might ask what the business is, um, but then say, hey, can you tell me, you know, can you spell what I just told you and see what they have to say, right? And, and see if they can, A, remember it, you know, seconds later and B, can they spell it, right? And so that's one of the key things. Um, length, generally speaking, shorter is better. Um, and then one of the big debates is, should I go with .com or should I go with something else? And the answer is usually .com, but it depends. And so in a lot of countries, in fact, .com is not the most popular extension. If you go to like really? Germany, most people are using .de. Um, and, hmm. you know, I'm trying to think when I went to the Czech Republic, it was .cz everywhere, right? Um, the United States, though, .com and globally .com is the most popular. And so right. one thing that I think trips a lot of people up is they see a domain is taken, so they give up on that name. Mm-hmm. And 
I shouldn't say most of the time. A lot of the time, you can acquire that domain name for one, two thousand dollars, which might seem like a lot, but if you're starting a business, I mean, you're probably putting well more than that into marketing, right? Or your, you know, your tow truck business, right? You know, right, the, the, yeah. the truck, right? Costs tens of thousands of dollars. Exactly. So, so getting a good name, you know, especially like, like let's think of a tow truck, you know, people need to remember that name when they're under duress, right? Like you said, mm-hmm. you're never in a tow truck for a good reason, I guess, unless you're dating a tow truck driver, but um, see, uh, I'm trying which, to be which we should, yeah, that. no, which we should all be trying to do. We yes, should all yes. try to date a tow truck driver that, that's high just for the benefit. Yes. <laughs> that's a friend with benefits. And whenever you get a flat tire, you've got <laughs> someone by your side. Right. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, something like that, right. People need to remember, right. When mm-hmm. they're in duress, right? I need a tow.com or something like that. There you go. There you go. Something that's, you know, super simple to remember, when you need to remember it and you're typing it on your mobile phone likely because you're on the side of the road so it can't be too long and and that sort of thing so um you know th- those are some of the things that i recommend to people that are looking for a, for a new domain name and, and don't give up just because it's taken because you know most names you come up with are taken but again you can usually buy them for an affordable amount sometimes the company will even or the person will sell it to you and say okay you can pay it over a couple of years or something like that mm-hmm. the cost even lower Okay, that's that's actually a really good tip because I I use uh, not to pitch any particular thing, but I use Hover and I go on eh, maybe on a, every other week look for domains because I'm a bad I, I I have bad ideas and uh, enough money to buy them. People like um, you are keeping the domain business afloat. It's a, totally, it. totally. Um, and so I when I see that the domain is taken, I do I just kind of like move off of it, try to find an mm-hmm. uh, alternative route. But and it just happened to me recently, and I was now that I think about it, it it probably would have been better just to go ahead and spend a little bit more money and just get the right domain name. Yeah, yeah. If, it, if it's for sale and affordable, and you're actually going to go forward with the business, um, then I mean I think it's a small small expense to pay. Yeah, cats for cats. I I gave up after a couple of years. I, I understand. Yeah, well, it's a bad idea. So. <laughs> um, okay, so I, let's I, so other domain questions. Um, I, what's the craziest? Do you have a crazy domain story to talk about? A crazy domain story. Like, was there one that you heard about or that you were involved with that you were like, this is nutty? Like, where maybe lawsuits were happening, mm, boy, ridiculous there, amounts of money, or something along those lines? A lot of lawsuits about domains. Yeah. I, I think kind of some of the most ridiculous um, story, you know, well, voice.com sold for like $30 million to a, a cryptocurrency company. Connect.com recently sold for $10 million to a publicly traded company. Um, but I would say kind of the some of the people I've met through domain names are, are interesting. On my podcast once, I had the uh, the bassist for Megadeth, and okay. um, I and you're know, like, well, what does that person have to talk about domain names? Well, a friend of mine was sitting next to him on a plane, and the guy's like, hey, yeah, we created basically the first band website back in the '90s. Um, and so we were kind of the first band to do it. And so it was a really interesting show. He was talking about how they'd get on bulletin board, you know, electronic bulletin boards while they were right. traveling and that sort of stuff and their first website. Um, so there's some really fascinating people you can meet because everyone's got some sort of story about domain names, right? Some sort of connection to, to domain names. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, even if I, I think one of the smartest things you can do is try to go get your name personal right. name as a as a website a- absolutely That's a absolutely great idea which is easier if you have a somewhat unusual name it can be really hard if you have a very common name. john smith taken yes yes <laughs> yeah um yeah i've tried to get my last name in dot com for a while but they're just yeah. someone's got it doesn't want to sell it and you know, I wouldn't actually be using it really in commerce, mm-hmm. so it's not like I. Isn't it infuriating I, when you go to check the website and it's like this project's being worked on for the last ten years, and it's like, oh. Yeah, but usually, that's the person if they're really working on a project that you can reach out to and hopefully mm-hmm. get them to to sell the domain to. You. Yeah, that's good. So, um, okay, so you had uh, you were in domain names, and then you decided you wanted to stop typing at people and talking to people, which I totally understand. Well, I'm I do pers- both, to be clear. Yeah. I still do type. but Yeah, I, I don't type because I'm lazy, but okay. uh, that's why I podcast. Um, 
but uh, but you started this podcast, and how long were you doing the podcast before you were like, oh, you know what? It's hard to get guests. Let's help other people get guests. Yeah. Like, I would say it was about a year. Um, yeah. So, you know, you're talking about 50 episodes. So for the first 50 episodes, I was just reaching out to people I knew in the industry. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, do I start over again with those people? Do I, uh, you know, go back to the well there? How do I find some new and interesting people? And so I started looking around and there are a lot of agencies that will help you get people booked on your shows, but they're expensive, you know, mm -hmm. thousands of dollars a month. And I know you make millions of dollars from your podcast along with Joe Rogan, but um, you know, as you know, the economics of running a podcast aren't such that most people can spend thousands of dollars a month on an agency. So I said, well, I mean, I guess I can try to create my own system for that. And so I reached out to some podcasters pretty early on. You've obviously been uh, a member of our community for a very long time because uh, this is 20, 2016, right? So we're... Yeah, it was either 20... It was... It was early. I it was, it was early. Yeah, yeah it, was it was very it was early. early. Um, so I reached out to some people and said, hey, I'm trying to do this thing. I'm just going to send you an email every week with a list of a handful of podcasts looking for guests. And if you're a fit for them, you pitch to them. And, you know, we can also feature your podcast in there. Right. And at first it was it was it was slow. I was reaching out to people and and, you know, asking them one by one to come on. And then it really started to take off. Like the first time I sent out an email, we started making connections. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm on to something here. And then, you know, word of mouth really started to grow the service. And, you know, I mean, it was still, it's still, you know, it's kind of hockey stick type stuff, right? You know, because right. new users tell new users and that sort of thing. Now we have close to 40,000 people um, using the service now. And we added in a paid component a couple years later based on user feedback where some of the guests, rather than having to pitch to all these podcasts, wanted to also be in a directory so podcasters could come to them. So we added that as a paid component. We've got about a thousand people or so. Uh, it's pretty are, robust. Like if you, it, like there are a couple topics I really want to hit on. And that's the first resource I use is that directory because good. I can go in and it, uh, for instance, uh, I actually just recently had a conversation with someone and it was about, uh, uh, why guys can't talk to guys, right? So okay. <laughs> like, we just don't talk very well. And so I, I wanted to, I want to go in and, and uh, check. So, but there's a number of different categories. There's mental health, there's, you know, other types of things. If you want to look for sports, people in sports, if you want to look for people in comedy, like all of those things are available on, in, in the directory, which is really fantastic. Um, what, uh, how long have people been in that directory? Do they like go into the directory and they stay or? Yeah, I would say, you know, the earliest people have been in there since I think it was about 2018. It was two years in that I started doing the, um, the directory. And so some of those people have been in there ever since. Um, but a, a lot of people come and go. A lot of people want to be on podcasts for a while and then they don't. I would say our biggest surge was when the pandemic struck. And I think... <laughs> It's because um, everybody was at home going, I yeah. don't know what to do. What I guess do I'll I podcast. <laughs> and, and, and how do I market myself? You mm -hmm. know, I can't go to trade shows and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and so that was really a pretty big inflection point. Um, you know, uh, so we, we have people that stick around for a month or two. And then we have people that have been around it in, in years. And like you said, I mean, it's a big variety. Like comedy, we have, you know, former Tonight Show writer, multi-platinum selling music artist, uh, and then, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people that started up businesses covering all sorts of different things. You know, the guy who created the hydro flask, uh, water bottle. I, yeah, he's been on my show. Oh, yeah, has absolutely. He? Yeah, right. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's some really interesting people. There's a, I, uh, I have had a number of personal coaches in or, or people that yeah. go around that a lot of, a lot of those, of course. But, uh, but what's interesting is when you start talking to them, you find you uncovered like other things about them. Like it's a, it's like you dig in a little bit, just a little bit. And you find out like someone's a concert violinist or someone is a, you know, a whatever else that they fly helicopters, whatever it is. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. kind of amazing what, who's on, who does what 
every time, every, every anybody who has like an interesting thing that they do, usually you can find something else interesting that they do. Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of like, just keep asking the right questions and that type of thing. So, mm-hmm. um, but, uh, but so, um, when you create a directory like that, what what does it take to manage a directory like that? What what happens after that? Like, yeah. you, you still have to because you always have to get new people on the directory because you need to have you an do. expanded directory. You, and you need to get people to use the service. Mm-hmm. What what are some things that you do to to help promote that stuff? Yeah, I mean, one of the challenges when you start a directory, you need people in it for people to use it right um and so that's one of the first challenges but then yeah you know a a lot of word of mouth there are a lot of people that talk up our service um i know you have thank you um you know telling their friends about it talking about it on clubhouse on twitter that sort of thing and we do a little bit of advertising now as well and and facebook and some other services to reach new people um you know, thankfully, it's it's always been growing, sometimes at different speeds than others. Um, but I'm really thankful that the community, I mean, when you think about it, most people use it for free, right? And so one way they can get back, and only a small percentage do, but is to tell other people about it. So occasionally I'll say, you know, in every email says, hey, you know, someone who might benefit from this, forward it on to them, right? So mm-hmm. I imagine there are cases too where someone sees a podcast, it's a perfect fit for their friend. Right. And so they forward it on to them and say, hey, check this out um, yeah. you can pitch to them. It doesn't cost you anything. Right. Um, so I would say that's a lot of what's what's led to it to, to grow to a thousand plus people. Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah. And it, it does. It, it's such a it's such a great service because you're right. Podcasting is for ninety nine point nine 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 percent of us is a losing proposition like we're not making money Uh, financially yeah yeah it's financially not yeah so to have an extra even an extra hundred dollars a month that we're throwing towards just getting guests that's a that's a tough ask because it's volunteer work for most of us so um it's really great to have that service and it's also really great that it supplies enough value to the people in the directory to stay in the directory because right they're, they're getting business off of that too. Right. Um, that is probably, so what is the biggest thing about podcasting? What are the things that people should really understand about podcasting? I, I, I've had Colin yeah. Gray on the show. I think I oh, actually yeah, had him through, Colin. through, uh, yeah, yeah. through podcast guests as well. And we talked a little bit about what, what podcasting was, but I'm always curious, like, what is podcasting for you? What does it mean as yeah. far as like things? Well, for, first of all, podcasting is a lot of work. People need to understand that, right? If they're if they're hosting a show, I always encourage people to be a guest first and see if they like that uh, yeah. before hosting a show. But to me, podcasting is all about conversations, right? I mean, there is no chance we would have met otherwise had we no. not met through podcast guests and we're having this conversation, right? And hopefully, hopefully you're learning something from it. Hopefully your audience is learning something from it. You know, you brought up that you know, domain names and going after them, even if they're taken is something that's a a good idea. Right. And so these sorts of conversations, they can, they can be very organic, but hopefully people learn things from them and then hopefully people connect through them too. Right. You know, if someone wants to learn more about podcasting or domains, hopefully they reach out to me, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. And you, that reaching out is actually something what what is up with podcasters always being on an island i feel like even when i go to a conference or i go to a gathering of podcasters everybody's so guarded is there <laughs> is there a reason for that Do, have you noticed that as well i don't know you know it's funny because in the domain name industry it used to be really like that and it's still yeah. somewhat like that too but everyone's guarded keeping their secrets that sort of thing yeah. you think podcasters would be very social but there's a big difference between sitting behind a mic and a camera and being in person with people. Right. (laughs) So I think that, you know, and I see that in domain names too, right. It's a, it's an industry dominated by, um, at this point, middle aged and older men sitting behind our keyboards, right. (laughs) Sometimes anonymously. And, uh, and then you put those people in a social situation and it can be kind of, kind of challenging. Well, you can't throw up a meme when you're talking to somebody, right? Like you can't have a GIF that responds to whatever it is. Yeah. Some people communicate a lot better through, through things like that than talking, talking one-on-one. My, uh, my youngest actually, uh, gave me some really interesting information through, uh, uh, 
a meme cartoon. Uh, I got a message and it was a cartoon. I was like, I don't really understand the content here, but it was about a, a character who had decided to change their gender. And that was how I learned my youngest was in transition. And it was like, whoa, through that beat. must have been the way you needed to communicate yeah, that. Yeah. Real awkward, but like, I kind of get it, right? So yeah. like that happens and you just kind of, okay, roll yeah. with it. That's the way you needed to do it. Right. Um, uh, as far as podcasts, are there certain types of podcasts that you think we need more of and mm. some we need less of? Yeah, it's interesting because people ask me, what are the most popular categories in the directory? Well, true crime, but enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, pe people. You know what you don't have on your you don't have on your directory. What's that? I just realized, true crime victims. There's no true crime victim section in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe it or not, though, I do have a podcast that went out uh, a week ago about uh, about murder and about the like victims' relatives and that sort of things. Right? Oof. It's like yeah, the impact <sighs> of course is not funny but no um but yeah uh, you know so so people ask me what are the most common you know people you have in there and i talk about entrepreneurs and business being kind of the big ones nutrition and i think that mirrors podcasts in general right there are a lot of entrepreneurship ones out there a lot of business um there are a lot of comedy shows out there because every comedian's used to you know i mean if you if you're a comedian you don't have a podcast you're not it's a it's a bad move you need yeah. to have one Unfortunately, I've got to create competition for myself because it's good for your career. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I would say those are the most common. You know, there aren't a lot of people say, oh, there are millions of podcasts out there. Why would anyone start one? There actually aren't that many active podcasts, right? The active podcast is somewhere between 300,000 and 700,000. So it's not it's not super crowded, especially compared to blogs, right? I mean, there are a million blogs for every topic and there's not nearly as much for, um, you know, for, for podcasting. Yeah. Uh, you know, this show, I, I actually, uh, according to like the rankings and all of the other different things, it's like in the top 5% of all podcasts, which is kind of amazing, but also like, well, that makes sense. Cause there's so many podcasts that have been abandoned or, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. median number of downloads for a podcast is is less is fewer than 200 per per episode, right? So a lot of them are getting 20, 30, 40, 50, which which seems like a small number, but you know, if you were to go speak to an audience of 100 people, that's kind of interesting, right? You yeah, know, that's that's how I feel about it too. Yeah. 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 That's good. Um and then uh podcasts that um are there a t is there a type of podcast that you get tired of? Like you've seen that podcast a bazillion times. I know I've got mine. I've got mine that that if I see another one, I just kind of like throw up on my mouth a little bit and move on. But I, yeah, I, I would say, and, and, and I tell podcasts to to niche down, right? So there are a million entrepreneurship podcasts out there, and so that to me doesn't become unless you're one of the big five. There, it's not that interesting. Unless you go down, like what What if it's an entrepreneurship podcast for doctors starting their own practice, right? Something More like niche, that. right? Yeah. Narrow. Yeah, exactly. I say niche, you say niche. We'll, we'll, it'll be okay. We'll, we'll, but, we'll figure yeah. it out in the end. <laughs> we'll niche down or niche down, <laughs> however you want to say it. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. We'll, we'll catch it as we uh, eat some tomatoes and potatoes. Yeah, yeah yes. exactly. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, that, that's what I always tell people. Be, be more specific. You know, I, I mean, to break through as an entrepreneurship podcast right now is really difficult. There are a lot of good ones out there. If you become just a little bit more specific, unless you already have an existing audience for that topic, I think it helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, what uh, have you had any um, have you ever had an, had an experience where you looked at a podcast and you're like, what what is this one about? Like you just see the name and you're like, I, I don't understand. I would never click on this. Is there not that you have to name names, but it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think a lot of time. So first of all, a lot of people just put their name, you know, the Andrew Alleman show. Well, unless I know who you are, that doesn't tell me anything. Right. Um, and you know, it works, you know, people know who Joe Rogan is now. Right. And that sort of thing. But un un unless you have a name, it doesn't really work. Um, and then, yeah, a lot have a really just kind of esoteric thing that 
you know, is like an inside joke to them. It's like, okay, well, that's great for you and the people that are in on that inside joke, but uh, not not for everyone else. No, no, it's just it's very almost exclusive because yeah. which is not what you want to be as a podcaster. You don't want to yeah, be an exclusive assuming, podcaster. Assuming, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming you're recording it and putting it on the podcast services because mm-hmm. you want other people to listen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, what kind of guests have you, you said you've had? Uh, you had the bassist of. Uh, Mega was it Death. Meg- Megadeth? Uh, interesting. Yeah. Like, what what other guests have you had on your podcast that you were like, have you had that guest come on your podcast? You're like, I cannot believe this person's going to be on my show. Um, not really. I mean, look, I've I've had some people that I really enjoyed having. I had um, Matt Molenweg, who's the creator of WordPress. Um, so big impact on the web. I had oh my the, goodness, yeah. the inventor of the domain name system. So he was able to talk about. You know when they came up with comnet and org and that sort of thing right so to me that's really cool um but yeah i think the most mainstream thing would be a musician from from megadeth um, yeah i mean that's that's like a universal everybody knows megadeth everybody right. knows what a bassist does i guess right i don't know i played bass in a band i don't think people knew what i did I sat right. in the back, stood in the, stood in the back and was With very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, good stuff. Um, anything else that you can give as far as like, as far as like podcasting domain names? I mean, all of these things really are interconnected because once you get a podcast, you have to have a domain name because you need to have a way for people to get yep. to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, like once you have a business, it's almost like natural at this point to have some sort of a podcast so that you can get extra reach. Right what, right. what are some, are any other connection suggestions that you can? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I think if people are thinking about starting a, a podcast, uh, you know, going into it for the right reasons, we talked about, you know, it's hard to grow a big audience, you know, consistently downloading your show that you can like sell ads for. But, you know, if you're just trying to grow your audience over time, maybe you have your own products and services, that sort of thing. Um, you know, having a, a podcast is great. It's also, as we mentioned, it's a great way to meet people, right? They could be partners or friends, uh, you know, business associates, that sort of thing. So really just kind of think about what your goal is going in. And and another thing I tell people is if you start a podcast, don't worry about making it perfect right out of the, the gate. Um, you're going to learn so much. You might change the name of your show like you've talked about. Um, you might shift what your topic is based on feedback and what interests you. And you're certainly going to improve your sound setup over time. You don't have to go out and spend thousands of dollars just to get started. So I would say just get out there, start your show and and then improve it from there. Yeah. I, uh, I always give the suggestion record four episodes that you don't plan on releasing. Interesting. And then at a certain point, I just did that. I've, I've got another podcast that I'm starting and it was like, Let's record four. And fortunately, the person I was doing it with, she was like, yeah, let's, that's fine. We can do that. So, but by, by now, we're, the format is really tight. Mm-hmm. Our uh, uh, chemistry on, the, on talking is very, very good. So I, I just think that that four is a magic number. Originally, yeah. when we started this show, it was supposed to be Saturday Night Live for your ears. And we did it on a 10-year-old, at the time, a 10-year-old iMac with rock band microphones so you do not need a fancy setup it's cheap and easy is yeah you don't want to talk into your to your laptop mic you know have an external mic for sure but um but yeah and and again you know you can improve it over time improve it over time yeah absolutely absolutely um awesome well this has been fantastic Uh, hopefully people learn some stuff uh i i think domain names are incredibly interesting because and it is it's almost like a hobby almost like in a lot of cases i think podcasting can become a hobby but i i I think domain names is actually kind of a fun hobby to have right right yeah i agree i agree uh you know it's it's a fun hobby it's a hobby you can make a little bit of money too on the side on so a lot of people do it you know like you said you have all these business ideas well you can also you know who knows when cats for cats will sell? I mean, I think it's a dollars. billion dollar idea. <laughs> um, those rich cats have all that catnip, nothing to spend it on. I know, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we are at that time. It is time to record a sketch. Andrew, that was fantastic. 
What I'd like you to do now is tell us where we can find more about podcast guests and all the other wonderful things that you do. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in domain names, which we've talked about, you can check out my blog. That's domainnamewire.com. And there's a podcast on there well as well that you can get on your apps. Uh, and then podcastguest.com. If you're interested in being a guest on a podcast, check that out. It's free to sign up. Uh, and if you host a podcast, we can help you as well. Find guests just like we've done for Stuart, for you. And it's been fantastic. Thank you Good. so much. And now our sketch. We need some fresh ideas. All right, team, we need to come up with some new categories for podcastguest.com. You know, I'm looking at the category list right now. We have like entrepreneurs and sports, and these are all great, but we need some new, we, we need to get some new blood in here, right? We, we've got to keep growing the service and getting some new people in. You guys are the creative ones that have come up with all these great categories. What are some of the suggestions that you have? I do have one. You know, like it's timely, it's perfect. What about insurrectionists? Like, don't you think that those that would yeah. be a great category to have? I think that would be very popular. What other ideas do we have? Um, you know, I was reading something the other day about a shipwreck. Um, what if we had the the people that go down with the boat? The captains? Yeah, I think that would the be really captains. good. Ship, shipwreck captains would be shipwreck fantastic. Captains, the boldest of them out there and, and the ones that, of course, uh, take their honor seriously. I'm Katie. I'm new. I know I probably shouldn't be talking, speaking up quite yet, but I just, I couldn't help but thinking we have a, a category for near death experiences. What about death experiences? Yes, Katie. Good, good contribution. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking about it. Uh, I, I go home to my pets every night and I, I wonder what they do throughout the day. What about like a, a thing for house pets? That makes perfect sense. We've all seen that movie, right? The Secret Life of Pets. I mean, I think, you know, I think I think this could be a big money maker having pets on the service. Just logistically speaking, do you think they should use those pin on microphones? Well, I think it would be really good on their collar. Uh, yeah, yeah. Collar Especially mics? Maybe. Those... Oh, there might be a market for collar mics then. There you go. You know what? Maybe. I have an idea and I think it's fantastic. What about experts in dial up internet? Yeah, boy, there are at least two people I can think of for that category. And, you know, those those guys are just crushing it, right? Especially the 28, what is it, 28-8? People that jump out of planes are interesting. But oh, what makes it more interesting, what about a parachute failure? Right. Do you think they have money to spend the parachute failure? Because they have to buy a new parachute after they hit the ground, right? I've got an idea. Mimes. Yes. Do you think they could wear the collar mics? Because I, I think I think that would make the mimes really good. They could put them on their sleeves so you could hear them move. But you just wouldn't hear anything other than their body moving. A lot of whooshes. Uh, video podcasts of, of ghosts. Um, I think that would be really interesting, too. Uh, oh, that's a great idea. Like, it, just a, a video podcast of, of a room where you can just, you, you can interpret it however you want, right? Exactly. Oh, you know, another one we could do would be people who haven't won the lottery, right? Everyone's interested in people that do win the lottery. Why, why doesn't anyone interview the people that don't win the lottery? And think about it. There are literally millions of people every week that will fit that category that can join our service. What about people that have been slapped at awards ceremonies? Oh, yeah, totally. I think I know someone who would be a good fit for that. Um, and that's definitely someone who would join our service. So I think that's a great idea. What about people who lose elections that don't want to lose? Like they just okay, sore yeah. losers? Yeah, like sore losers. Like they, they don't believe the election was real. Mm. Yeah, I just, is there anyone who fits into that category? I just, I can't, I can't think of anyone. So I, I'm going to have to think about that category. You know what? Come to think of it, a lot of these categories, they just aren't that good. I mean, I know I hired all of you on Fiverr, but, you know, I'm expecting better ideas. You're fired. Get lost. Thank you so much for joining us for Sketch Comedy Podcast Show today. I really enjoyed making this episode with Andrew, and I hope you enjoy listening or watching it as much as we enjoyed creating it. Thank you so much for joining us for Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. We hope you enjoyed listening or watching as much as we enjoyed making it. Now I've got to put a couple of seconds into some legal stuff. 
So Sketch Comedy Podcast Show is protected under Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives 4.0 International License and is copyright 2023 Stuart Rice. I really hope you join us for the next episode of Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. In the meantime, go out there and improvise a comedy adventure of your own. Till next time. About that. All right, so we'll do cats for cats because I think I can get that one again. Oh no, cats for cats is taken. What? So here's no. The thing. Did you let it expire? I thought I did. So when a domain expires, oh, and it's porn now. <laughs> is it? <laughs> so this is what Damn happens it. when you register a domain and you let it expire. People snap it up when it ends. Really? Oh, well. Like it's Asian porn. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm glad somebody's using it, right? Yeah. You know, a, a, what a wasted resource Cats for Cats was. Now, now I'm curious if Cats F-O-R, let's see. That's for cats.com. That one's registered. Uh, it is. <laughs> what about that cats? One, that one was recently registered this year, and it's going to some Chinese site. Uh, again, it looks oh, like here we go. Oh, I got cool. it. Catsfordogs.com. Cats for dogs. So we'll just go ahead and just register that. Oh, what? Believe it or not, that was previously registered and expired. <laughs> Is that in right? Fact, in fact, it was registered back in 2007. <laughs> it, it just recently expired. That poor person well, is going to be is like... It, is, this, is this with... with, uh, with the just number? the number four. Oh, okay. Let's see. That's four. Both of the both of those domains have been registered at one point and then expired. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just register cats number four cat dogs, okay. dot com and then uh, yeah and then.